Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Dave Basulto, Apple Learning Coach and Media Arts Instructor at San Marino High School. I am so excited today about this app. Uh, this is the Blackmagic Camera app. And being a longtime user of Filmic Pro, literally since its inception, I was pretty much stuck with it forever. I just was part of my workflow. Uh, trouble with Filmic Pro for me now is that it's kind of gotten more corporate in a way where they're charging a monthly fee. Uh, I preferred when I paid once for it and, um, you know, if maybe a big upgrade, we would pay a little more or new features. All of that was awesome. So I've been kind of on the fence about using it with my classroom and my students because you can't really ask them to pay a monthly fee. Now the free version, I think it works for, I don't know how long, but, um, doesn't really have very many bells and whistles. So. When Blackmagic dropped their camera app for the iPhone, and you can use it on iPad too, uh, I was really excited. So I wanted to show you how it works and let's get into it right now. So here we are looking at uh, Commodus, one of my Funko guys and one of my Hot Wheels. In the background, you can see my Blackmagic ATM Mini. What's nice right away, if you notice, it's out of focus. So you can get depth of field with this. It's pretty awesome. Uh, it's a really, kind of daunting interface for newbies. When my new students come in, they'll look at this and go, what are all these buttons? What's nice though, if you don't tell them anything, they'll start pushing buttons and see how things work. So that's what I love about this intuitive um, world we're in now. But let's show them how it all works. So if I go to the top left and go right, we see something that's called lens. So if I click on that really quick, it's gonna show me different lenses that I can use. I can use the super wide run right there. This is the normal lens, two times telephoto and five times telephoto. And then of course I can switch to the selfie cam. So right away, really simple to switch between your different lenses. Next to that, I see FPS for frames per second. Right now I love shooting in 24 frames or 48 frames. So I teach the students how to use that quite a bit. Of course, you can just slide it around right here and let it go to whatever you want. I'm gonna leave it on 24 frames per second. Now with the 24 frames per second, I'm gonna keep the shutter at 1 48th. So double what I have for uh, my frames per second. So if I was shooting 30 frames, I'd have a 1 60th shutter, et cetera. Next to that, you'll see Iris is at a F1.8. We're gonna leave that. We have nothing to do with that right now. Then I've got my timestamp right there. And next to that is ISO. If I click on that, this is showing me how much light I'm gonna let in. So I can go really bright here and just start blowing it out. Or I can go back to where I was, which was a nicer color. Let's go back. Was it a 250, 200, I think, right? So I went 200. I'm gonna leave that alone. And then there's the tint and all that stuff. So depending on whether you're outside, I go to the right here and click on it once. Now I can say, oh, I'm outside in the sun or I'm inside with light bulbs or maybe there's fluorescent lighting. I wasn't sure about this last one here. Is it outside in the shade or is it raining? So I really didn't get the last one there. Maybe you guys can put it in the comments. And then the last one down here, and that's a cloudy day. So these are all your options here. I'm gonna put it back to there so I have it nice and normal and then actually I'm just going to hit auto and go back to what it looks like in my room that'll look auto correct itself there. So that's all of that. It's really great. Now down on the bottom left, you'll see the color scopes right there and I can film up to 853 gigabytes of video. When you see the meters running here, that means you've got audio. So you always want to see that you have audio and make sure that it's uh, in there and checking okay. Now if I go over to the right here, the top button there, that opens up some options here. If I want to turn this first one on, which is zebra stripes, I believe, which will show me if things are hot or to need to come down a little bit because there's too much uh, light on that. This next one here, I'm not quite sure what the next one here is. Maybe the focal point, autofocus. And next we've got grids here, all kinds of grids. And I can actually see right now, because I had the first one on, I can see that my Commodus right here it's starting to have uh, too much light on him. So it's kind of shining. 
Um, so I've got options for that to fix it later. Underneath that, I've got this option and that option and this option. So all kinds of options to shoot with here. We'll come back in here and turn all that off. Actually on, I'm sorry. So here, so the first one is the zebras. So now I see that over here, the light's really bouncing a lot off of this. It's really bright white here because it's a white table and the white's coming in here and hitting it. And then he's got some color burns right here where, and even around there, that's really pronounced and stuff. So if this was a shoot, I would want to relight this really nicely. We're going to turn all this off for now. Now, next, let's go underneath that. And this is your focal point. So I can go here and change the focus on it. It's on auto now. If I turn it off, I can do all kinds of stuff. Back to this. Okay, so next to it here, we've got all these menus with a big button in the middle there that's red. That when you press the button, it'll start filming. So let's go down in the bottom really quick and go work our way up. If I click the bottom one, it shows me that I have lens data for the iPhone 15 Pro Max, a slate for the next clip that I shoot. Is it a real one, scene one, take one? So I want to use this because it'll keep things organized. So once I've done all this, I know it's like we're just starting out our film. I'm going to slide it to the right. Here I can put in my production name, which camera. So I could say Johnny's camera or Louie's camera or whatever. Who's the camera operator? What's the director of the movie? Blah, blah, blah. So it's some nice metadata in here so they can keep track of what their videos are. And I, I like doing that a lot. On top of that, here we've got our zoom. So I can start to zoom in like that. So you have that option there. On top of that is the, the ability to have kind of a gimbal like feel for your, for your smartphone, for your iPhone. You turn it off and you start running around, things will be a little bit shaky. You have standard, it's just gonna try and correct it as much as it can. Cinematic, much more smooth, extreme, a lot more smooth, but a little bit of a delay. So you can, I like to keep it on cinematic usually and let them start shooting with that. Up on top of here, we're gonna skip that one and we're gonna skip the last one for now, but we'll do a separate video to get into those advanced features. Okay, over on the right, you see it says camera. That's where we're on right now. If I go next to media, here's all my clips will be. Blackmagic offers a Blackmagic cloud that you can log into and store your footage there if you'd like to. That way, maybe someone you're working with can download them from the cloud and uh, start editing. They got a chat feature here and down below settings. So settings is pretty important. Let's go through them. If we click on record for the first one, we've got our codec. So in our codec here, we see Apple ProRes, which is a really, actually Apple ProRes 422 HQ, extremely high-end video codec, similar to what you would get on a Blackmagic camera. So hence the Blackmagic camera app. So if you're trying to really master your movie, you want to have a great highest quality piece of footage, that is the way to go. Note that not all editing um, programs work with this. I'm not sure about a cap cut or anything like that. Adobe Premiere Pro, Final Cut Pro, DaVinci, those will work with it. Then you start working down on lower versions of the ProRes where you get down to a proxy. Then you've got HEVC, which is the new video standard um, for mobile devices, I believe. And then H.264, which is the old standard. So I just leave everything in HEVC when I'm just shooting uh, mobile video stuff that I'm going to put on YouTube. But if you're really trying to shoot some cool stuff and want to do, you're making a film, Apple ProRes is the way to go. However, remember, it's going to take up much more space on your device. All right, next we've got the camera. When you click on that, you can enable vertical video there. You can add trigger record indicators. So if I wanted to use my volume lever or my white balance or something, I lock it, I mean, so you can do all of these different things. So if I wanna enable vertical video, I can. If I want to trigger the record indicator, so that means that do I want the start button or the on off button or the volume button 
to trigger record. I can do all that. I like to keep it on, just press that one button and go. There's shutter measurement. It's measured in speed. You can change all that to angle. There's flicker free shutter base on. I leave the default at 50 or you can go to 60 if you want just so you don't have any uh, flicker, but I haven't had any problems with that. A lens correction, if you're looking to lens correct uh, because you're using a super wide lens or something, here's anamorphic de-squeeze. If you click on that, it's got 133 and 155. So if you're using an anamorphic lens, which I tend to use in my classroom quite a bit, I love to teach students how the old films were made with super anamorphic look. It's got flip for SLR lenses. So if you're using some kind of a a DSLR lens, a Canon lens or something like that with the adapter, which has it upside down. It'll flip it correctly for you. It'll lock orientation. And then you want to mirror the front facing camera. So I keep that on audio, which is super important. You'll see right now it says audio source. If I click on it, if I had something plugged in to my phone, uh, some kind of a external mic a shotgun mic, a wireless mic, whatever. I wanna make sure that it shows up here and that I can select it so that I know I'm getting the right microphone. So once I know that, then iPhone microphone, we wanna auto do it if we're just using that. So it'll choose the closest one to the subject. Audio formats, ACC, I'm gonna leave that alone, but you have linear and IEE flow. I wanna record it as, I can record it as stereo, mono, dual mono, and four channels of audio. Pretty crazy. Sample rate, I like to keep it at auto, but um, some people like 48. Audio metering, uh, I'll be quite honest, I have no idea what these are. <laughs> so I'm just leaving it to what it defaulted as. Audio monitor, so if I wanna monitor the audio as I'm watching this, uh, but I do have other ways to do that, so I'm gonna leave that off. I'm gonna plug in something like the Rode AI Micro to the microphone and headphones so I can monitor the audio that way. And then audio output would be system. So if I turn this on, actually, and I, I then have an option to go here, so I can do stuff like that. And, and maybe you're wearing uh, earbuds or something, you can listen to it. So I'm gonna leave that off for now. Monitor, so am I using a monitor, a focus assist monitor? See how it says down here where it says HDMI out? So I can get a HDMI out signal from the iPhone going into a small monitor or actually a big monitor if I wanted to, to see what I'm filming. So maybe I'm the cinematographer and the director needs to watch what you're doing. You could totally do that. It's pretty crazy. So all kinds of options for that. A display audio meters, histogram, all of that stuff I like to leave on. Um, upload status, a battery indicator. Actually, I'm gonna leave the battery indicator on. I didn't have that on before. Media, so upload clips. So if I'm uploading clips to the Blackmagic Cloud, um, do I want proxies only or do I want originals and proxies? So proxies, of course, are gonna give you a smaller file and faster uploads. Auto upload to selected project, enable upload only over Wi-Fi, which isn't really that big of a deal anymore, especially if you have these unlimited plans, although it is gonna chug things down when it's on 5G and you're trying to export 4K video. Save clips to in-app only. Do you want it to go into the Apple library? Or I can go to files. So if I have connected to this an SSD device, external storage, you can have that and it'll record to that. So then you just pull it out and boom. File name convention, Blackmagic Camera or iOS. I like Blackmagic Camera because like I showed you, we can put all of our own information in there. LUTs or lookup tables. So if I have my own LUTs, that I want to use, and I've put them in the camera or somewhere that I can use them, then I would have this turned on and create LUTs. So LUTs will be explained in a whole separate video because there's a lot to do with it, and there's some great LUTs out there. Presets, so I can set a preset. Maybe I've got everything the way I like it. I'm gonna call it Mr. B's favorite setup or whatever. You can set your preset for that. And actually it's nice at my classroom, uh, my students using the iPads on this app, can save the way they like to work. Accessories, so do I wanna use Bluetooth accessories? I have an option for that. And this is new, the Nucleus Wireless Lens Control. I'm gonna do a video review about this later, but it is ridiculous. It's basically a wheel that you can rack focus on the iPhone like you could on a big cinema camera. It's pretty amazing. Next is Blackmagic Cloud, if I wanna log into it or not. 
reset my camera settings about which version I have. And uh, that's it. It's all pretty awesome. We'll get out of this and go back into the camera. And one of the cool things about this is that, like you said, you see the depth of field back there. So the videos you can make with this are pretty amazing. And the best part about this is it is free. So I highly recommend everyone downloading this app and checking it out. It's the Blackmagic Camera app. I'll have a description below where to get it. Thanks for watching. I'm Dave Basulto. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more videos like this. Happy filming, everyone.